principal, subordinate and coordinate clauses. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to define a main or principal clause, define a subordinate or dependent clause, define a coordinate or independent clause, identify the principal, subordinate or coordinate clause in a given sentence. Flick! Flick! Look what I've got! What is it, Cece? My friend Mona sent me a postcard. Oh, wow! Where is it from? It's from an island called the Maldives. Let me read it out to you. It says, Hi, Zizi. I am spending the summer holidays with my family in the Maldives. The Maldives is a beautiful island which has many beaches. I have learned how to swim and I have made many friends. Love, Mona. Isn't it beautiful, Fleck? Sure is, Cece. Reading letters from your friend Shaw is fun. Let's take a look at what Mona wrote to Zizi. Mona has written a number of sentences or groups of words. Each sentence contains a subject and a predicate and also makes complete sense by itself. For example, I'm spending the summer holidays with my family. In this sentence, the subject is I and the rest of the words form the predicate. The predicate contains the verb am spending. Let's revise the definition of a sentence. A sentence is a group of words that contains a subject and a predicate and makes complete sense by itself. The predicate always contains the verb. Now, let's revise the definition of a clause. A clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a predicate and forms part of a sentence. If the sentence has only one subject and predicate, then it means that it is made up of only one clause. A sentence may have one or more than one clause. Let's look at the following examples. The party will begin in the evening. The party will begin when the sun sets. The first sentence contains a subject, the party, and a predicate will begin in the evening. Hence, it contains only one clause and makes complete sense by itself. The second sentence contains two groups of words. The party will begin and when the sun sets. The first group has a subject, party, and the predicate will begin. The second group has a subject, sun, and the predicate containing the verb sets. Both these groups of words form part of the larger sentence. Therefore, they are called clauses. A clause may or may not make complete sense by itself. Let's look at the following example. The Maldives is a beautiful island which has many beaches. The sentence contains two clauses. The Maldives is a beautiful island and which has many beaches. 
both these clauses form part of the larger sentence. The first clause has the subject Maldives and the predicate is a beautiful island. The second clause has the subject which and the predicate has many beaches. If we further study the sentence, we will observe that the first clause makes complete sense by itself. However, the second clause does not make complete sense by itself. The clause that makes complete sense and can stand on its own as a sentence is called the principal, independent or main clause. In our earlier example, the first clause is called the main clause since it can stand on its own as a sentence. Let us look at another example. I played on the beach. This sentence consists of a main clause only since it has only one subject and predicate. A main clause can combine with one or more clauses to form a sentence. The clause that does not make complete sense by itself and depends on the main clause is called the subordinate or dependent clause. The subordinate clause tells us something more about the main clause. It can never stand on its own. A subordinate clause is usually introduced with the help of words such as that, why, when, what, how, if, who, which, where, because, since, as, etc. In our earlier example, the first clause is called the main clause and the second clause is called the subordinate clause. Let's take a look at one more example of a subordinate clause. We played on the beach till it was sunset. This sentence contains two clauses. We played on the beach and till it was sunset. The first clause has the subject we and the predicate played on the beach. It makes complete sense by itself. Therefore, it is the main clause. The second clause has the subject it and the predicate was sunset. It does not make complete sense by itself. The conjunction till joins this clause to the main clause. Therefore, it is the subordinate clause. There are three types of subordinate clauses, a noun clause, an adjective clause and an adverb clause. The subordinate clause which does the work of a noun is called a noun clause. For example, Zizi knew that Lara was taking the book home. This sentence has two clauses, Zizi knew and that Lara was taking the book home. The first clause is the main clause since it makes complete sense by itself. The second clause is a subordinate clause since it does not make complete sense by itself. Moreover, the subordinate clause acts as the object of the verb new and does the work of a noun. Hence, it is a noun clause. The subordinate clause 
which does the work of an adjective is called an adjective clause. For example, the book that she took home was very heavy. This sentence has two clauses. The book was very heavy and that she took home. The first clause is the main clause since it makes complete sense by itself. The second clause is a subordinate clause since it does not make complete sense by itself. Moreover, the subordinate clause describes the noun book in the main clause and does the work of an adjective. Hence, it is an adjective clause. The subordinate clause which does the work of an adverb is called an adverb clause. For example, Lara was very tired when she reached home. This sentence has two clauses. Lara was very tired and when she reached home. The first clause is the main clause since it makes complete sense by itself. The second clause is a subordinate clause since it does not make complete sense by itself. Moreover, the subordinate clause modifies the verb was in the main clause and does the work of an adverb. Hence, it is an adverb clause. Let us now learn about another type of clause called the coordinate clause. The clause which is connected to one or more than one clause of equal importance and makes complete sense by itself is called the independent or coordinate clause. The coordinate clauses in a sentence have an equal level of importance. The conjunction joining the independent clauses is known as the coordinating conjunction. The coordinating conjunctions generally used are and, but, or, either or, neither nor, so, for, yet, etc. Now, let us study the coordinate clause with the following example. I have learned how to swim and I have made many friends. The sentence contains two clauses. I have learned how to swim and and I have made many friends. The first clause has the subject I and the predicate have learned how to swim. The second clause has the subject I and the predicate have made many friends. If we further study the sentence, we will observe that each clause makes complete sense by itself even though it is part of a larger sentence. Each clause is therefore independent of the other clause and is of equal importance or rank. The two clauses are called coordinate or independent clauses. The two clauses are joined together with the help of the coordinating conjunction AND. Let's take a look at one more example of a coordinate clause. The sand is warm but the water is cool. The sentence contains two clauses. The sand is warm and but the water is cool. Each clause makes complete sense by itself even though it is part of a larger sentence. The 
two clauses are called coordinate or independent clauses. They are joined together with the help of the coordinating conjunction but. We have so far seen examples of sentences having one main clause plus one coordinate clause or subordinate clause. However, a sentence may have more than two clauses as well. A sentence may contain one main clause and two or more subordinate clauses. For example, Mona, who is my friend, has written a postcard that came in yesterday. In this sentence, the main clause is Mona has written a postcard. The other two clauses, who is my friend and that came in yesterday, are the subordinate clauses since they do not make complete sense by themselves. Also, a sentence may contain two or more coordinate clauses. For example, Zizi saw the letter and opened it, but she did not read it. In this sentence, there are three independent or coordinate clauses. Zizi saw the letter and opened it and but she did not read it since they make complete sense by themselves. Also, a sentence may contain a mix of a main clause and two or more coordinate clauses and subordinate clauses. For example, Zizi saw the letter and opened it, but she did not read it because she had to leave the room where the meeting was taking place. In this sentence, the main clause is Zizi saw the letter, the clauses and opened it and but she did not read it are the coordinate clauses. The clauses because she had to leave the room where the meeting was taking place are subordinate clauses. Hey Zizi! That was very nice of Mona to send you a postcard. Don't you think even you should send her one? Yes, Fleck. That's a great idea. Come, let's go find a postcard for her. <laughs> Before Fleck and I get busy writing a long letter to Mona, let's quickly revise the main points we have covered in the lesson on principle, subordinate and coordinate clauses. A sentence is a group of words that contains a subject and a predicate and makes complete sense by itself. The predicate contains the verb. A clause is a group of words that contains a subject and a predicate and forms part of a sentence. If the sentence has only one subject and predicate, then it means that it is made up of only one clause. A sentence may have one or more clauses. A clause may or may not make complete sense by itself. The clause that makes complete sense and can stand on its own as a sentence is called the principal, independent or main clause. A main clause can combine with one 
or more clauses to form a sentence. The clause that does not make complete sense by itself and depends on the main clause is called the subordinate or dependent clause. The subordinate clause tells us something more about the main clause. It can never stand on its own. A subordinate clause is usually introduced with the help of words such as that, why, when, what, how, if, who, which, where, because, since, as, etc. There are three types of subordinate clauses. A noun clause, an adjective clause and an adverb clause. The subordinate clause which does the work of a noun is called a noun clause. The subordinate clause which does the work of an adjective is called an adjective clause. The subordinate clause which does the work of an adverb is called an adverb clause. The clause which is connected to one or more than one clause of equal importance and makes complete sense by itself is called the independent or coordinate clause. The coordinate clauses in a sentence have an equal level of importance. The conjunction joining the coordinate clauses is known as the coordinating conjunction. A sentence may contain one main clause and two or more subordinate clauses. A sentence may contain two or more coordinate clauses. A sentence may contain a mix of a main clause and two or more coordinate clauses and subordinate clauses.